We're here to honour and celebrate special people and a way of doing, uh, which I think is really very important. But uh, as I came into this room, and I think Mark, you referred to it, there is a different mood, a different sense. And it's exactly the sense that we need more of in Ireland, and we need more of internationally, and we need Ireland to continue to be a bridge internationally, as we can be um, on this. And I'm aware of the work of Social Entrepreneurs Ireland, the way that we're beginning to realise that uh, it's not just language to say that we need to be a knowledge economy, that human resources matter, that we actually see the proof of it, when we see the potential of individuals who decide to build something, decide to do something, decide actually, by and large, because these are social entrepreneurs, to really give back, to listen carefully, find out you know, what needs to happen to help to improve the situation, whether it's here in Ireland or more internationally, and to get on and to do it. Uh, I have learned in this small group that I lead called Realising Rights, the importance of partnership, the importance of working with others and working both locally and internationally, helping the local voices get out and work internationally. As I was working with communities in Africa where we have our main focus, whether it was in villages, in slums, with women's groups, everybody was talking about the climatic shocks, the climatic change. I began to see a very direct connection between climate change, development, and human rights. And I tried to bring the two ideas of climate change and the suffering that I was seeing on the ground, but I was also seeing that the setbacks of climate weren't accidental, weren't mother nature, weren't God-given. They were actually the fruits of our lifestyles. We should use the resources of the world in such a way that we pass them to our children in good standing so they can use the resources of the world. I think there is an enormous potential to understand the parameters of climate justice. Climate justice, of course, begins with the stark injustice of the fact that it's our carbon-based growth lifestyles in the developed parts of the world that have caused an undermining of the climate and development in the poorest parts of the world. And it's happening now. That's the first part of climate justice. The second part is that the United Nations and member states and all of us have proclaimed over and over again the right to development. If you think about the poorest that I've been re reflecting on in rural areas, in slums, in uh, very poor, uh, weather-stressed areas, the only option they have is a messy, carbon-based option. But there are pockets all over the place that I'm hearing about. Pockets where social entrepreneurs are at work. And suddenly you have solar battery, cooking on biomass, water distillation, all these kinds of ideas. But they're affecting 100 villages here, slum dwellers in one place there. Where is the scalability? Where is the working in a synergy that will mean that we'll have much more possibilities of the poorest having access to low carbon development? If poor people have power, they won't need development aid as much. If the poor have access to power, they will develop themselves. They will do what is necessary in the slums, etc. It's one of the very positive aspects of development at the moment. The way that the poorest are using means of organization through the internet to become more of a voice. Uh, what I feel about the Ashoka Fellows, about Social Entrepreneurs Ireland, is there's a wonderful opportunity to be part of a new paradigm of development, which is much more about making sure that the poor have the choices for their own development, and they do center around energy. It's about resilience, it's about uh, having the courage to face situations and say, okay, we know where we are, if we work together, if we work in a community sense, if we use our full potential, if we look after the more vulnerable and the weaker in our society, we can go forward. We bridge in the way we have been doing over the centuries in our own survival, that we bridge now the necessary survival of the world itself 
by arguing and insisting on green technologies for the poorest, low strategies for poor countries, um, opportunities um, for uh, changes here in Ireland that are replicable, like Mary Nally is doing, and her, and her colleagues in her foundation. So um, I think it's time for the kind of mood that I sensed when I came into the room, uh, the optimism, the go-getting, the entrepreneurial. I look forward very much to hearing more about um, the kind of potential that is here in Ireland. I see it in the universities here in Ireland. I see it in young people. Let's build on that and um, let's kind of readjust to the potential of the future, not quite so much the gloom of the moment. Thank you very much.